Hello, welcome to the video with me, Winner Android. Another video of Weekly Andrew, in which this week uh, I'm basically only talking about the one anime that was actually left from a previous season that was still airing. Mostly just due to the fact that I don't really feel like talking about anything from this season this week, at the very least. There is one thing I kind of think I could be talking about, but I'm just going to push that off to next week so I know I actually have something to talk about next week. But, uh, yeah. Anime from the previous scene. Brain of the Seven Spellblades has ended after 15 episodes. Weird number of episodes, but okay. But, uh, yeah. Overall, the story, I think, was interesting. But that's all I think it really had to it, was just the story was interesting, kind of. It didn't really have much else going for it, I feel like, at the very least. Though it did have that have a revenge plot going on, but that was for a single episode, before it's just cut sidelined, which will eventually come back at some point, I guess. But, um, yeah. For the most part, I'd have to take a guess that this entire season for it was just the beginning of the story, and that it was mostly just establishing all the characters and the worlds itself. That's what I'd have to take a guess at what this entire season with 15 episodes was basically just the beginning of the story, getting everything established. So, yeah. No idea if it's going to get a second season. I personally don't think it will, but, eh, it's always possible. But, yeah, that's literally the only thing I actually really had to talk about. So, I guess I'll just move on to the next thing I got, which is Lessons in Luck, as I did actually get around to doing that this week, with version 34 of it, which added four events for INA, four events for Uta, three for Miku, three for Futaba, three for Wakana, and three for Imani. And what's the order that I did them all in? Mostly just the way that was most efficient for me to get through them all was all three of Wakana's events. One event for Ayane, all three of Futaba's, one event for Uta, two for Imini, another for Uta, then Imini's last event, then Uta's last two events, then all three, last three of Ayane's events, and then all three of Miku's events. So, yeah. For the most part, I'm just going to kind of just try and basically group all the characters' events together, considering they mostly, for the most part in this update at the very least, did not actually didn't really have any requirements depending on other characters' events for the most part, besides Imani, who required Wakanas and Butabas to get hers, but yeah, I had those by the time I got to the point where I could do that, so yeah. I'm going to start off with Wakana, of course, which is most of the notes I got, i be honest. But um, yeah, Wakana tries to get Sensei to help her find information on the poets, the girl who cannot breathe, because of how similar Ami's poem was to one of theirs. And she is worried that Ami is going down a similar path to her, or is just plagiarized their work. And after Sensei just refuses to actually say anything, Wakana just basically gives up and apologizes for crying and then asks him to carry her because her legs are giving out due to malformed spine and stuff. But yeah, we learn a bit more about walking her rights there and some problems she has herself, but um yeah. Sensei agrees to actually carry her after getting her to agree to buy him dinner. And yeah, during the dinner they end up having a Having a bit of a conversation with Wakana telling him about... With Wakana basically telling him that out of all the people that he could possibly be pursuing, the one person I should actually be pursuing is Imani, considering they're basically... They're good match. But yeah, Sensei ends up explaining that, that he doesn't want to change the, his relationship with her. Mostly just due to the fact that he's afraid of destroying the friendship and stuff. But yeah... It's the one relationship that Sensei is actually mature about. So yeah. Wakana ends up dropping that topic and ends up asking about this relationship with Nikki, which she just learned about in the previous update. And yeah, the whole conversation and everything ends up ending with Wakana bringing up about how he never actually contacted her after she overdosed on her medications. 
which since I ended up pointing that out, that that happened years ago at this point, which Wakna dies before going silent and then bringing up a passage to a Bible. So yeah, different response when it comes to the whole time thing for once. Instead of just brushing it off completely, she actually denies it and then starts thinking first afterwards. But um, yeah, that's Wakana's events. And um, yeah, Futaba is the next one I'm doing here, which is going to be very quick because I can literally sum it up. That's Futaba learns about Sonotica's new book and confronts her about breaching everyone's privacy, especially hers. Considering, um, yeah, they're friends. Futaba's basically told everything to her, so a lot of secrets are in that book. Yeah. But that's basically Futaba's events. There's more to it, but I don't know how to really talk about it, so... Moving on to Uta's events, in which, for the most part, it's basically just Sensei and Uta kind of spending more time together and getting closer to each other, I guess. And Uta also has a conversation with Iyo, with her talking about her past and stuff, and the fact that people are still sending pictures to her, which are getting past the parental lock that she has on her phone. And yeah, apparently the total count of pictures that she's gotten in the month is up to like 8 or 9 now, and it's kind of thinking it might be time to get a new phone again. Because apparently she has to do that quite often. Because yeah, her past is really getting back at her. Eh, <sighs> poor Uta. But yeah. Now the Suta stuff, so uh, moving on to Imani, in which starts off with Osako and Rika basically setting Imani and Sensei up on a date, basically, to get them closer to each other. But yeah, they end up just talking for the most part, and Imani ends up asking about Nikki, and she's getting a bit of a rivalry with her at this point. But um, yeah. She later ends up trying to move things along and go get things going forward with Sensei, and yeah, he holds himself back and starts explaining the stuff mentioned earlier to Wakana. Now he's basically afraid to chain, ruin their friendship and stuff. So yeah, it basically shuts down Emini for the most part. Yeah. And then with Emini's last event is Emini, Wakana, and Kairin going shopping to get costumes for Halloween, because that's going to be the next update. And while Kairin is looking around and stuff, Wakana and Emini are talking, in which Emini, of course, brings up what just happened between her and Sensei and stuff. And afterwards, Wakana asks Emini if she knows anything about the girl who cannot breathe, and explains that she thinks that it is Ami's mother, which I'm pretty sure she's correct about, and is worrying that Ami is going down that same path and stuff. And near the end of the conversation, Karin jumps in and says that her father may have gone to school with Ami's mother, which prompts Wakana to ask for her father's number and stuff, so she can get more information and things. So yeah, Wakana seems to be seems to have quite a bit of an importance here going forward, despite the fact that she's a side character. But uh, yeah, next thing is INA's events, in which well, it's basically time for the Chica's threesome, in which INA ends up confronting Sensei about it first. And telling him that he should have gone and told her first before Chica got around to it. And she ends up telling him that she already accepted. And then on the next Saturday, you end up getting the threesome. Which, to be honest, I was kind of uncomfortable going through that. Probably has to do with the amount of deception going on to fool Chica, basically. Considering she thinks Sensei's a loyal boyfriend and stuff. Uh, yeah. And then there's also INA being passive-aggressive with tons of fucking sarcasm. Now, Chica, of course, never picked up on. But, uh, yeah, with whole threesome there, Chica did set boundaries on what sense they can do to INA and stuff, which was basically just down to fingering and licking, I guess. But, yeah. Threesome ends with Chica basically asking if they'd be up to doing it more in the future, which INA has to think about. But uh, yeah, that was INA's Vince for the most part. 
So now on to Miku's. Miku! Well, she overdosed on those medications she's been getting for me, which, um, yeah, it was bound to happen eventually. And Sensei ends up taking her back to the dorms and stuff. Next time that Sensei goes to see Miku, she ends up lashing out due to a withdrawal, I'm guessing. And, yeah, Sensei has to take care of her until Makoto gets back to take care of things. Because Makoto is better at handling things than Sensei is when it comes to Miku, at the very least. But, yeah, the next morning, Miku ends up showing up at Sensei's house to talk about him and tells him that Makoto found out about the drugs and that Maki has now scheduled an appointment to an actual doctor. So, yeah... Miku is finally actually going to get proper help for once. And she also ends up telling him about what actually happened to her when she is a child. Why she has all these mental problems and stuff. Which is basically just due to the fact that her parents were killed by burglars. Yeah, that's it basically. Now it's pretty much the end of Miku's events there as well. So yeah, I basically kind of gone over everything that was in this update. Next version is going to be Halloween, like normal, guys. Well, October. So yeah, Halloween this month. If there's another update next month, then we'll get something there, I guess. Otherwise, it's going to be December that the next update's going to be, which is, of course going to be Christmas. But, uh, yeah, I can imagine that's probably getting close to the next reset at this point. Because I kind of feel like it's been a while since we had a reset at this point. But, yeah, um, that's everything for Lessons in Love and stuff there. So, um, yeah, don't know what else to talk about. Now I can send it a subathon, of course, for its two-week break for TwitchCon and stuff. So, haven't really had next to watch for an entire week at this point. Yeah. Still gotta wait another week. Yeah. Oh well. But, um, yeah, at the very least, I'm getting some stuff done, I guess. Still haven't really gotten much else done when it comes to Trials and Tainted Space. Didn't touch it all this week either. Seriously, now I get back to trying finishing that up. Getting Gubito done so I can move on to saying she getting everything else there done. I don't think Dao would take very long because I don't think there's tons of contents there. But yeah, once I get to that to all that stuff done, that's basically everything in the game done currently. Considering Paldera is still being worked on. I'm getting everything started on it. But yeah, Series 4, as Papal states on Age of History 2, is doing okay, I guess. It's definitely doing better than what was normal, I guess. So, some of the growth from that Queen series definitely stuck around, that's for sure. Which is nice, for sure. But, yeah. Definitely not doing as well as that Queen series. But it's definitely doing better than what's been normal, which is nice. But, yeah, I don't really have out much else to talk about here. Uh, I guess I've kind of gotten City Skylines and opened that game up again for a second time, I guess. Considering I played it once over a year ago, I think, and just starting off of City on the air and then... This last week, I've kind of just gotten back on it again. And yeah, played it twice in the last week, basically. And what city what I had at the beginning there is completely gone at this point, basically. Completely removed that entire portion of the city because I'm just getting ready to renovate that whole area. While I've expanded and stuff, getting tons of more high residential, I guess, to make up the population and stuff. I think. Got an entire island dedicated to industry. But, um, yeah. Getting things going on there. Had to reload the game once. Because, um, thing kind of just got out of control. Because I de-zoned a little residential area, I think. And somehow that ended up spiraling out of control. So much that I basically lost the entire population of my city. And, of course... Along with that, all the taxes. 
so I went into tons of fucking debt. So I end up having to kind of reload there. But, um, yeah, that's everything I kind of did on there, I guess. Oh, yeah, I also had it where I got to the point where I had like 30,000 population. I still had a single elementary school and a single high school. Yeah, very uneducated city, that's for sure. But I did build more schools and stuff, so it's not the case anymore, I guess. But, uh, yeah. I don't have anything else to talk about, so I'm just going to go ahead and end the episode here, because I honestly don't know what else to talk about, so, yeah. But yeah, that there is in this video. I hope you've all enjoyed it. I hope you all have a wonderful weekend, and I'll see you all in the next video. Bye bye